Okay, folks, I'm here with Stacy, and we're doing a little bit of an interview. Uh, she's a corrections officer, and so we want to ask her just a few questions and uh, find out what her experiences are to try to help you make your decisions about what you want to do in the future. So, Stacy, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, my background, I've only got a year worth of corrections. I've been a, a waitress 20 plus years. I went straight from that into a corrections officer at GEO. Now, GEO is a private corrections company? It is a privately owned correctional facility. Okay, and let me ask you this. Did you, what was your education when you got that job at GEO? Um, high school and a little bit of college classes. Okay, and uh, now at this time, what's your level of education in college? I, I'm a sophomore. Okay. At the end of this term, I'll be a sophomore. Okay. Now, um, how long have you, you have? How long have you been with the corrections agency? Then the uh, private Since agency. Since November of last year. Okay. What's the nature of that work? Tell us a little bit about what you've done in a year. Well, basically, I just I manage. I was managing a house of two hundred and twenty-six male offenders. And uh, it's obviously, apparent that you're a female. Is there is there ever a concern about your safety for example? always? Always, yeah. even if you're male, there's a concern of safety because the inmates, they don't care if you're male, female, black, white, or how old you are. Yeah. If they want to retaliate for some reason, they are going to. Have you heard of, seen, been involved in cases of violence or anything? I did break up a fight one night on my own, which I was, wasn't reprimanded, but I was told it wasn't proper procedure for me to go on on my own. But as I watched, the one gentleman was not fighting back. Mm -hmm. So he was more of a victim. Yeah, he was. He was just standing there taking it. He was holding on to a bunk bed, and I went in and told him to stop. They wouldn't. So I went in and sprayed both of them and separated them before, by approximately three minutes before the my other first responders arrived. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever witnessed instances where they've had kind of the correctional equivalent to a SWAT team have to enter in a cell and uh, defuse the situation? Yes, I am on one of those teams. It's called the Quick Response Team. We do cell extractions for offenders that don't want to, as we put it, cuff up. Yeah. For How many people are on one of those teams? In that, there are five. And what do you, what do you wear when you're in that type of setting? We wear a padded, uh, like bulletproof vests, only it's a whole suit. You have gloves that go up to your shoulders, knee pads, shoulder pads, or elbow pads, the uh, helmet with the face shield on it to prevent anything being thrown or spit mm -hmm. anything at you. Mm -hmm. have and, you ever... and it's a stab vest as well. It's what? A stab vest. Stab vest. In the event they have a weapon. Yeah, they can't stab through they the vest. They can't stab through the vest. Okay. Uh, have you ever had involvement with a, a, uh, a prisoner that had AIDS? After the fact, yes, I found out a select few have HIV, AIDS, but knowing after finding out who they were, we take extra precautions. We always have mass amounts of gloves on hand. So we you're always, just always careful regardless of whether they use, do or don't. We always use universal protection anytime we handle or deal with an offender. Okay. Uh, another question that I have is, um, what's the nature of the offenses that you've dealt with as far as the, the clientele, as far as the offenders that you have to work with? The majority of them out there are sex offenders. Um, when you say sex offender, what do you mean They by? range from sexual misconduct. He's... 17, his girlfriend's 16, she turns 18, the parents file charges. Mm -hmm. Some of those, those are the mild ones, minor ones, and then they go all the way up to child molestation, uh, pedophilia, mm -hmm. you know, we have pedophiles, rapists, um, mm -hmm. and then there's minor crimes, drug offenses, murder, there's a few in there for murder. Mm -hmm. they, they prefer us not to ask an offender what they're in for, yeah. Because when you find out they're in there for molesting a child, or it is hard to treat them the same yeah. as you would anyone else. You do treat them differently. Yeah. 
I mean, do you make it a point to find out what they're what they're no, charged with? Or? I don't want to know. Yeah. Okay. It's easier to deal with them if you don't know. Yeah. Because if you know one's in for drugs, you're going to be less strict on them. Mm -hmm. If you find one that's in there for rape or a child molester, you're going to be harder on them mm -hmm. and single them out, more or less pick on them, mm -hmm. I guess. It's kind of natural. Yeah. Well, let me ask you uh, another thing. Just your overall assessment of your job. What do you think about it? I love it. I didn't know I would be capable of doing such a job. Like I said, being a server for 20 some years, you know, I deal with all types of people. Yeah. And then I go in here and I'm still dealing with all different types of people, but on a different level. Yeah. It's not, what well, can I get you to drink? It's, uh -huh. you're not, you, you can't do that. Oh, yeah. You need to do this. And you know, we have to wake them up for breakfast. We have yeah. to wake them up for their medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, we have basically, you... basically is still waiting on them. Yeah. But, yeah, I can kind of you know, see we do have to still have to wait on them. We have to wake them up. We have to tell them when it's time for bed. Mm -hmm. We tell them when they can go outside. We tell mm -hmm. them when they can watch TV, when they can use the phone. Sounds like raising kids in a way. Pretty much it's just a glorified babysitting job. Only mm -hmm. It's not so glorified sometimes. But generally, you're saying, uh, uh, thinking about all the bad things and the good things, you still really care. You really like it, huh? I do. I do. Yeah. I've met a lot of unique people out there as far as coworkers and offenders. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I just have a couple final questions. Why did you go to college? Why did you did you have to go to college to keep that job? No, I never even thought of that job until this past year. Mm -hmm. With this job, I was. Figured, I'm taking the classes for criminal justice. I might as well go into that field. Yeah. See if that's see what, what it's I all wanted. about. It's yeah. Because I'm still not certain which field of criminal justice I want to go to. Okay. So your commitment is you want to do something in criminal justice. Yes. Just haven't really settled on a final decision. Yeah. My cousin was an Indiana State Trooper and was killed. Oh. In '99. Okay. okay. And I uh, kind of want to carry on what he couldn't. Yeah. So. Now, I know you're a mom now. Are you a single mom? Yes. How does that, managing all that, all this stuff, like work and college and kids and the responsibilities, how does that work out for you? When I have the chance, I sleep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I have time to do. I get home at 6.30 in the morning. I wake the kids up at 7, take them to school. I'm home by 8.30. I'm in bed by 9, wake up at 2.30, pick the kids up at 3.30, drop them off at 4, go back to work at 5.30. Do you take any online classes? I have one online class and your class. Okay, which is a face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hey, thanks a lot for sitting for the interview. Really appreciate it, and I'm just really trying to make it available to other people that are trying to understand this whole correctional criminal justice business. So, so thanks a lot. Um, let me ask one final thing, and then we'll be out of here, I promise. Do you see a, a significant difference between the private, public aspects of prisons? Are you, are you aware of any differences? In a way, I do. I mean, I've never been into the public prison systems, but I know they are harsher. They don't have as many luxuries okay. as the privately owned hours. They get a rec area that has all the weight equipment, gym equipment they need. Mm -hmm. um, they have flat screen TVs. They wow. get, I mean, aside from their beds, they have all state-of-the-art accommodations. Wow. Well, let me ask you this then, because it leads to another question. I'm sorry, I keep saying we're almost done here, but um, I mean, you're a pretty practical person. You've been around a while. What do you, what do you think it's like, are you giving people that are supposed to be punished a reward by giving them a flat screen television? Or? I think, for the most part, some of them get rewarded when they shouldn't. Where I'm at now, currently, I'm not in the general population. I've been moved to the segregated facility, which is the annex, mm -hmm. which is your, we have one unit is the PC unit, which is personal protection. People inmates from the yard are afraid of getting beat up or raped or anything like that, they come down there and they're in two-man cells versus on the yard there's four pods of 60, 54 to 59 offenders in one area 
and they share that room, the whole yeah. day room. And then the, the other unit is the lifers, pretty much. They're mm -hmm. there for life. They have nothing to lose. That's where most of these staff assaults, which we've had three in the last three months, I think, mm -hmm. where they'll come out for whatever reason or they won't do what they're supposed to. They open the door and one got cracked in the head with a, a bag of a sock full of batteries. Mm. But the inmate got the worst of that because he expected the officer to go down and he didn't. He staggered, he came back and he beat him. Good. He well. got him. But the two before that weren't so lucky. They mm -hmm. knocked him down and he got a broken nose, a broken wrist. Okay. And they just got him down and they just kicked him. And another one before that, uh, one punch from the offender, broke his jaw in two places. Wow. Yeah. But That's... a lot of it, can't put it all on the offenders. Yeah. A lot of it is how your officers treat them. Yeah. I've seen a lot of officers, I don't want to say deserve that, but when you go in there with a chip on your shoulder and you're, I'm better than you and you're going to do what I say whether you want to or not, yeah. they're going to retaliate against you. If you go in there and treat them with respect like a human being, whether they deserve it or not, they treat you with nothing. I get nothing but respect from any offender I've ever come in contact with. I actually have offenders that will stand up and anyone tries to come at me or make comments that are inappropriate, they will stand up and, you know, defend me. That's amazing. You know, because I've done nothing but treat them just like a regular human being. Yes, yeah. they've done a major offense or maybe not, but yeah. they're still a human being. They're doing their time. It's not my place to judge them. Yeah. Okay, well, excellent. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you helping us out. And good luck in the future with your education. Thank you.